Hello everyone, come on in. Today we're gonna to talk about garden planting. It's that time of year, though garden planting can happen all year long and especially at the end of a season, planning for the next season. Um, but right now I am in deep with garden planting. First, I want you to go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you don't miss any great content. And if you could tap that like button, we'd appreciate that too. All right, so garden planning, where do you start and what do you do? How do you get it all done? Uh, so seeds, these are my seeds. This is how I have them organized. So first I wanna see what I have and then what I need. I do have some seeds starting behind me and I have some that are ready to be transplanted. So I am in that stage. I have my computer because I'm a techie gal and this is what I'm going to use to design out my garden space and to keep track of what I need when I can plant it with a planting chart and then when I actually do sow my seeds uh, or do some direct planting or transplanting. So first though, what we need to look at are the spaces that we're gonna grow in, right? So we need to figure out where are we growing, how many beds do we have, whether those are in ground, raised bed or containers. So let's go over and look at a couple of the spaces that we'll be growing in this season. So I have some little barrels that I like to grow in. They're also on wheels so I can move them around which is really nice. Then I have some fabric pots to grow in. Uh, these are 30 gallon fabric pots. I also have some 20 gallon fabric pots um, to grow in. And then back here I have two raised beds and also two more 30 gallon pots back here. So when I'm deciding and I'm planning the season, this is one area that I'm planning for. There's a potting bench that goes right there. And I could over here do some planting uh, just up against this wall so I can do some there. This is a really good area because right there over by the citrus trees, there is tons of alyssum and that alyssum brings in so many bees. It is amazing. So this is a really good area for me to plan for. Now let's go look at another area. All right, here's the second main area I'm going to be growing in this season. You can see I've already got three raised beds here, a uh, good size raised bed, so I'm happy with that. And then I'll also have some containers right here, probably here, maybe over there. Then right over here is a hedge and I can put some containers over there, but the sun really does get blocked a little bit by that hedge, so possibly not. Um, the one thing to consider up here is one, the sun exposure. It's morning and <laughs> sun comes up over there. This side of the house gets sun all day long and it gets super, super hot out here. Uh, you can see that my broccoli has bolted. I let it go to flower. Um, the bees are loving it, but broccoli and cauliflower didn't bolt on that side of the property, on my north side of the property. So something to consider when you're planning. Also, this gets tons and tons of wind. Uh, normally it's okay, but when we have a pretty big windstorm, then we have some issues and we just had a big one. So I'm gonna have to pull these purple pea pods and I had a squash plant and they really, really got beat up. So again, something to consider. The good thing is I have these on wheels so I can always move them. Uh, these two are a little bit harder because I have this little arch in between them. That one there is pretty easy to move. And then most of my containers I put on wheels. But this is a great place for those heat loving plants. This is a really good location. It's close to the house. I have a couple of water sources that I can get to quickly. A little bit harder for drip irrigation right here but I have a workaround for that too, so um, I'm okay there. So now let's look at a couple of other spots that I wanna grow in this season. All right, <laughs> so I'm way down here. This is another area that would be good for some raised beds. I have some uh, four by four raised beds that I could put down here. Now it's just after nine o'clock, so you can see that the sun is coming in and it's getting some decent sun over here, but that is east. The house is right here 
And so that sun is going to come across the sky and it's going to go down over here. So this area doesn't always get as much sun as some of the other areas in the property. The one that we just saw and a couple of other areas we're going to see. So we have avocado trees over here and we have lots of alyssum and some other flowers like poppies and other uh, native flowers over here but I could possibly put a couple beds. The other good thing about this area is that I have a water source that's right there. So um, it's a couple hundred yards away, but I could run a line and I could still do my drip irrigation over here. Now it is a little bit further away from the property, but great area, just needs to be cleaned up a bit and I'll have to level out probably this section right here. All right, so let's go look at another area. Okay, so here is another area just down from the house that wouldn't be a bad area to grow in. I've been pulling some some dead plants that we needed to cut back, but it wouldn't be it would be a pretty good place. The only issue with this is how close I am to a water supply. There's tons of irrigation out here, but all of this irrigation uh, especially for the avocado trees is on a timer and so I don't want to interrupt that. So this little area would be harder to grow in for me. Um, so even though I think it gets great sun exposure and it doesn't have the wind problems that I have up there by the house, um, it may not be a good area for me to grow in uh, long term. If we were staying here, then I would put in an irrigation system so I could grow down here because I do like it. And again, we have alyssum all over the property. Uh, so that's wonderful. Plus we have a lot of um, drought tolerant plants, flowering plants, um, and some other flowers that are coming up. We have tons of flowers on this property that bring in our pollinators. So this would be a good area as well, but not for the short term. But I'm gonna show you one more area um, that is a possibility. Okay, so here is another area that I could possibly plant in uh, if I wanted to, just a, a little bit north of here, it's a little bit flatter, so I could put a couple of beds right there. Um, there is irrigation, an irrigation line that comes through here and it's a manual turn on. So I could possibly run a line down through here so I can uh, set up irrigation for these beds here. Again, this normally the wind comes up higher up there. It's not as bad down here, so this might be a really good location. Uh, it gets quite a bit of sun where um, it starts to get the sun this time of year, probably around 9, 9.30, right? And then it'll get it until sunset. So this is a pretty good area to think about growing in. And again, I have tons of plants that are gonna pull in my bees and my pollinators. We've got butterflies that come in, hummingbirds, uh, bees. It's, it is a good, good location for a bed. Now pests down in these areas, the three that I'm showing you that are down here, um, I'm gonna have a harder time with those squirrels, definitely, and some of the field mice. So I'll have to cover those beds uh, with wired covers so I can protect the plants in them. But this is the other location. Okay, so now we're gonna go back and we're gonna go look at seeds that I do have, seeds that I might wanna get, and then how I organize them and how I do my planting chart. Okay, so now I'm back to my original location. I've looked at all the areas that I think I wanna grow in this season. Um, and as I said, I'm gonna do more container. Um, I do have a couple, of, I think I have four raised beds that are ground level. So when I decide about planting those, I'm gonna go for things that I think have run their course by the time we leave. And then things that I don't wanna lose out on, I can transport in a container and a lot of my containers have wheels on them, which is really great, so I can move them around. So now that I know where I wanna plant and how many beds I wanna plant in, now I start getting into seeds and planting. And I'm gonna show you how I organize my seeds. Um, I actually got this from um, another gardener. She is Deanna Cat on Instagram. Uh, Deanna, posted these I think last year or the year before she had these little containers 
Um, and they're really, I think they're for photographs. You just get them on Amazon. I loved that she did that. So uh, I got some a couple of seasons ago and I started organizing. So I'm gonna give you a close up look at how I organized them so I know uh, what seeds I have and then how I then start planning it out and decide what seeds I need. And the horrible part is I always need more seeds. I'm a little seed obsessed, I think. Um, and if you're going to be doing some transplants, maybe you have a great local nursery that you like to get some plants from that have already been started. That's great too. Just make sure that that's in your plan, right? So, and succession planting is a big part of your planning. And what succession planting is, is when you first start your seeds and then you say, okay, I want to grow carrots and I'm going to plant carrots now and then I'm going to plant some in two weeks and then I'm going to plant some in um, four weeks and I'm going to plant some in six weeks. And what that helps you do is not get overloaded with the harvest, um, which is, you know, then you're canning like crazy or giving it to your friends or uh, drying or you know you're, you're starting to preserve and you just get overloaded so now you're you're spacing out your harvest so you can enjoy it fresh and then also preserve it and give it uh, but you're not overwhelmed with it the other thing that I find uh, for succession planting is that if I end up having a pest problem by the time I plant again uh, I can, I've dealt with the pest problem so the next batch doesn't get hit um, Otherwise, if you plant all at the same time, if you have a pest or disease issue, your whole crop gets taken out, right? So succession planting is great for that. The other thing I do also is I plant some of the same crops in different locations on the property. That way, um, if something gets hit by squirrels or grasshoppers or aphids or any number of things, it just gets hit in one area and I have that same thing in another area that I can enjoy if that one gets taken out. So those are things that I plan for. But let's take a closer look at the seed organization. So here are the seed containers. Now I use a label maker and I do go in and I label my containers. And you can do this uh, in a couple of ways. You could, so like on these beans here, I'm starting to get quite a few beans. So I could put pole beans and bush beans. So I know the difference. The same thing with tomatoes. I could put my determinant and indeterminate uh, in different containers. So it's just faster. And really it's just about being organized, keeping them in a, a place where they'll be protected from moisture, from heat. And you can put quite a few seeds in here. So I have lots of packets in here. They're really deep. So when you're looking at it, they're actually pretty deep. So I can put quite a few seeds in here. Um, so that's really good. The other thing that you can think about on your labeling is if you want to do your cool season and your warm season boxes. You could do that as well to get them organized. And that way, again, when you're looking at it, you know what you have. Now, I also digitally organize my seeds so I know what I have in spreadsheets. And that's the geeky part of what I do. So we'll look at that next. So now we're into the planting chart, more of the digital version of my planning. I would also say garden geeky version of my, my planning, but this to me is so important. And I'm just gonna go over it quickly. I actually recorded a longer version of this, but it's, it's close to 14 or 15 minutes. So I'm gonna upload that separately so you can see how to use the sheets. Um, that we have here. But right here I have just some plants that can be grown in my area. This planting chart, Kellogg Garden has planting charts for zones one through 10. So they have vegetable, fruit, herbs, flowers. Um, so I will put a link into those uh, in the description for those planting charts so you can grab those and check them out for your region. 
has all the plants that I can grow in my region when I can start seeds or direct uh, sow them or harvest them. It also has my average frost date, um, first frost and last frost, which is great. Tells me all the things I need to know about my plants. And then I've also created one for the individual plants um, varieties that I've bought. So, and in your region, so artichokes are a little bit harder to grow in my area, but I can grow them. So they may not be on the main sheet, this one, but they're on my personal sheet. So I copied over some of the main um, plants and then I put in here the different varieties that I have or that I want to get. Remember, I am seed buying right now and I have some big orders in. So I put the companies that I get them from um, and I, I go with companies that really know my region. So some of the smaller ones plus some of the larger seed companies. I definitely look for organic and natural um, but this is where I keep them. And then in here, I also put in when I'm going to start my seeds, my planting date. So right here, uh, I'm starting some, some more beet seeds. I started them today. It's actually linked here. It is linked with this calendar here. And I can see that um, I started broccoli, beets. I didn't actually start zucchini, so we can delete that. But I started those three right? Again, this is really geeky, but this gives me a digital version. You could just journal if you like. Um, I'll put a link on in the description on how I did this, and it'll be in the longer version of the video too. So I have all of this, and then I also go in and I draw out my beds. So this was actually my last season. So this was fall and I have three beds here and I have two in the fenced area and then I have some containers there. So I like to do it and I'll move me over here. I like to do it for the back area, the front patio, and then the side area. And the way that you do that, let's say I wanted to put another bed here each one of these squares is one foot. If I put a bed there, I just grab them, put a border around it and merge all. And there you go. So like I said, this is where I start looking at um, plants that I can grow uh, and what season I can grow them in, and I start tracking my seeds digitally. So let's go back out to the seed station where I have all the physical seeds, uh, and we'll finish up there. Okay, welcome back to the garden planning table, my little station here. I know that I've gone through a lot, so let's recap really quick. So if you're just getting started, if this is your first garden, or if you're expanding your garden, or you're gonna move things around, first thing I recommend is just walking through your space or spaces and really looking at what you're going to be growing in. So raised beds, containers in the ground, how much space you have, jot down any notes about sun exposure, any other conditions like wind or pests that are in your area, things that may have happened last year or last season um, that are going to affect what you wanna grow this season. If you've already started seed collecting, then you want to get those out uh, and start looking through them to see what you have. Now, I referenced a garden chart. I'm going to put a link to Kellogg Garden's vegetable chart so you can go look by zone what vegetables are planted when and harvested when in your area. I would then get in and I would start working the chart and just start cataloging what seeds I have and what seeds I want and then when they need to be started. So whether I'm starting them indoors or outdoors, um, I would start getting that just all laid out. And this is the time to get those seeds if you are going to start with seeds because they start to run out. <laughs> but don't be afraid um, if you don't plan for everything because that's part of the fun of gardening is that during the season you may need to tweak or you may need to go get something else. We didn't talk about soil, but I would be considering soil right now too. Um, 
especially if you have some new beds. I do. I have some different containers uh, and beds that we're building, so I'll have to think about how much soil I need. And I'll put a link in the description about figuring out soil as well. So I hope you enjoyed my garden planning for 10 zone, zone 10B. <laughs> and I want to thank you for joining me, and I will see you guys next time. Happy gardening. Do you have to interrupt every video? Seriously, everyone. It's like every time. <laughs>